You may have heard of the concept known as the Snowball Earth, the period on the planet that most likely happened several times, when most likely the entire planet was covered by ice caps and by various glaciers. Something that we usually find as specific types of glaciated fossils, discovered in some of the most unusual locations, such as in the tropics or extremely close to the equator. And though Snowball Earth very likely happened several times, the most famous one, or basically the period that's usually referred to as the Snowball Earth period, very likely began on our planet approximately 720 million years ago, near the end of the period known as the Boring Billion, and when life was still somewhat primitive and was not particularly well developed. But as soon as it started, the entire planet was covered in ice for practically 60 million years. With the Earth finally thawing and becoming a little bit more hospitable for multicellular life, roughly around 650 million years ago during the Ediacaran period. But the thing is, it was never really entirely clear what exactly caused this really really long period, and there was never really a direct geological or some kind of an impact connection that could explain any of this. There were some hints here and there, but nothing too specific and we might actually have our first explanation that finally has very definitive proof and extremely well explained geological evidence. It was basically, once again, volcanoes. But not just any volcanoes. Some of the biggest volcanic eruption in Earth's history. Something that started happening pretty much exactly 720 million years ago and lasted for 2 million years. But more importantly, something that happened over a very, very large area. A huge chunk of North Canada right here is basically this Igneous province. Today referred to as the Franklin Large Igneous province. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And in this video we're going to be discussing the most likely explanation for the most famous Snowball Earth period, the period that once finished resulted in an explosion of multicellular life and some of the first complex animals on the planet that evolved during the Cambrian explosion in the next 100 million years. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the obvious. The volcanoes in this case were always the biggest suspect. We don't really know what else can cause such a huge glaciation period if it wasn't for a major change in the climate of the planet. Now obviously it could be due to some kind of a position of the solar system somewhere around the galaxy, or maybe it influences the emissions from the sun, or there is just so much stardust that it decreases the amount of sunlight reaching the planet, but so far all these propositions have been very speculative without any actual physical proof, and honestly we don't even know if any of this affects the climate on the planet just as much. But we know that volcanoes usually do, and they've already been responsible for at least a few potential climate changes, even involving extinction events. But once again, we're not just talking about a single volcanic eruption or a volcanic eruption that ends pretty quickly. Sort of what happened with the Tonga eruption in 2022. Here we're talking about a continuous volcanic eruption over a really large area of hundreds and even thousands of kilometers that lasted for approximately 2 million years. And in this case, this type of an eruption is a completely different story. But the question is, so how exactly could it possibly influence the climate to change everything? Now the usual explanation is aerosols, various types of sulfur emissions, or potentially some other molecules, that essentially as they enter the atmosphere, absorb a lot of sunlight blocking the light from reaching the surface, and thus slowly cooling down the planet. As we've discussed in one of the previous videos in the description, this is often proposed as a potential solution to the global climate change a really really bad solution that's super dangerous. Check out that video in the description if you want to know why. And usually this is something that happens almost right away, pretty much the same year, but very often does not last for a very long time. Maybe a couple of years, maybe a decade, but nothing that's going to be too dramatic and nothing that's going to be too constant. Now obviously with constant emissions for 2 million years, the sulfur aerosols are definitely going to be doing this over and over, but it's not super clear if this is going to be able to cause dramatic shifts in climate where the ice caps and glaciers start to cover the entire planet. A lot of these aerosols do not stay in the air permanently, so it's not super clear if this is even possible. So several scientists believed in a different explanation, the one involving what's known as weathering. And weathering is an extremely common geological phenomenon on the entire planet. It's the phenomenon that usually builds up a lot of rocks and a lot of different types of deposits. 
It basically occurs when rainwater, which normally contains a little bit of acidity from the CO2 content, starts to react with minerals and starts to form different types of salts and different types of clays. And though this is a slow process, it's usually very effective, especially when it involves lava. Lava, or igneous rocks, are extremely active when it comes to weathering, and they can usually chemically transform really quickly, forming quite a lot of new minerals by sucking out CO2. And so this weathering effect, or basically all of these rocks, serve as a kind of a CO2 sink, which end up absorbing quite a huge amount of CO2 from the atmosphere, trapping it in various sediments for a very long time. They actually usually end up in the ocean at the end. And if you do this for 2 million years, especially over a very, very large area, and especially during a period where there's maybe not a lot of life around to produce CO2 to basically counteract this, it eventually drains the planet of its main source of greenhouse gas and starts to freeze the waters on the surface. And one of the main reasons this explanation makes more sense than sulfur particles is mostly because of the timeline involved. When it comes to sulfur emissions, they usually act almost instantly, and they normally stay in the atmosphere for maybe a couple of years, whereas when it comes to the weathering effect, it's something that takes at least 1 million years to even start acting, and will usually take a few million years to really have an effect. And so to actually come to some conclusions, scientists behind this recent study analyzed tiny crystals in a lot of different samples in the Franklin Large Igneous Province, trying to calculate the precise age when they might have formed and when these igneous provinces existed. In the process of discovering something really important, it looks like these very powerful volcanic eruptions started approximately 1 to 2 million years right before we know glaciation started to occur as well. And by itself, this really makes that weathering effect as the primary explanation for what most likely happened to planet Earth 717 million years ago. And actually a completely separate team from just a few months ago pretty much came to the exactly same conclusion using slightly different samples. And back then the Earth was obviously very different. It very likely contained just one continent, we refer to as Rodinia, and this continent was extremely close to the equator. This obviously meant that there were a lot of rains here, a lot of weathering, and all of this was happening extremely quickly. But once the weathering started to kick in and started to act on the planet, the glaciation very likely happened pretty quickly as well. It's believed to have taken less than 2 million years to start. And once it started, it lasted for almost 60 million years. But at this point, it's not entirely clear what made this disappear. Something happened to melt all of this ice and transition the planet into much warmer place once again, so there was definitely quite a lot of complexity going on on the planet when the multicellular life was just developing and was still trying to establish itself on the planet. But because the evidence for this particular glaciation is essentially found on every single continent on the planet and it basically extended all the way to the equator, it makes this so-called Sturtian glaciation one of the most exciting events to ever have happened on the entire planet. It was definitely not the first such period and most likely is not the last, but probably one of the most remarkable periods that might have served as the potential source of the explosion of complex life on planet Earth afterwards which is a very strange mystery. Following major glaciation events on the planet, there was always some kind of a major change in life on the planet as well. Definitely a connection worth exploring. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. An exciting new discovery, an exciting potential explanation to the snowball earth hypothesis, and something we'll talk more about once there are more discoveries in the future. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.